hey guys um i just wanted to let you know that uh there's kind of a very big time gap between the first part of this video where i'm like setting my stuff up and like the tour part because i got sick which was fine but i lost my voice so i was supposed to film this part a really long time ago but i just i couldn't because i couldn't speak so i'm here now and my voice sounds like this because of that so if i sound like a man that's why but before we begin and i show you guys the process of me setting my bookshelves up and giving you guys my first ever bookshelf tour because it's the first time i'm actually proud of how my bookshelves look and super happy about it um i wanted to thank today's video sponsor which is BetterHelp. thank you so much BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video in the past couple videos i've been talking about how i'm going to grad school in january which is literally like less than a week away which Je je the way that January is that close blows my mind um, and I start grad school in two weeks which is so surreal to think about because when I first started talking about me going to grad school this past year or like couple of months I was just applying and I didn't think that I would actually get into school and then I ended up getting into all of the schools that I like followed through with the application process with which blows my mind i did not think that i was that capable i think that's just me and my imposter syndrome and i think imposter syndrome is a big thing that i struggle with a lot of the times i feel like i don't deserve some of the good things that come my way i don't know why i just never feel like i deserve it and that i'm not supposed to be where i'm at regardless of if i have the right credentials like i have my degree i have my bachelor's but i still in my head feel inferior i don't know i'm like this but I feel like therapy would be an amazing option in helping not just me but other people out there maybe you also experience imposter syndrome or you may be dealing with another issue that you think that speaking to a therapist would really help so I'm here to talk to you guys about BetterHelp BetterHelp is an online service that connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful unbiased advice Starting therapy can be really hard. The right therapist for you might not be in your area and a lot of people also find the face-to-face -face aspect of therapy to be really uncomfortable. But with BetterHelp, you can have your therapy sessions as a phone call, a video chat, or even just messaging, whichever's more comfortable for you. BetterHelp can help match you to one of the 30,000 licensed therapists in their network, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise than what may be available in your area. What's also great about BetterHelp is that you can schedule therapy sessions at a time that's most convenient for you. If you think you might benefit from therapy, please consider using BetterHelp. You can click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com Emily. Clicking that link helps support this channel and it also gives you 10% off your first month to see if BetterHelp works for you. To get started, you'll fill out a questionnaire to assess your specific needs, and then you'll get matched with a therapist within, in most cases, 48 hours or less. If the therapist you're first matched with doesn't seem like the right fit for you, you can switch therapists at no additional cost without having to worry about insurance, who's at your network, who's in your area, or anything like that. Over 4 million people have already used BetterHelp to start living a happier, healthier life. So again, if you're interested in trying out BetterHelp, please click the link in my description or visit betterhelp.com slash emily. And without further ado, let's get on to the video. postcards down to the bottom here just because when I fill this with books obviously they're gonna get covered look how beautiful they look I am so happy so excited to fill these Too bad. I think we'll 
just keep it like this for now. I will be doing a bookshelf tour. Actually, I'll include the bookshelf tour in this video because y'all stayed through all of this. So you deserve a bookshelf tour. I've never done one before. Um, I don't know if I'll go so in depth, but I'll go in depth enough. <laughs> Hi everyone, I had a really bad cough, so that's why I sound like this, but um, yeah, I pretty much kind of lost my voice a little bit, but yeah, I'm going to do my makeup really quick so that I look a little presentable, but um, while I do that, I wanted to talk about everything that's been going on with my bookshelves, so I didn't take a before photo, which I should have, but my mind was already set on building the bookshelves and taking the old ones down that I literally just tackled the whole thing. Not tackled, you know what I mean. Now I have two of the bookshelves built. I'm actually putting my makeup on in one of the bookshelves. My old shelves I'm giving to my cousin. I've been wanting the white Ikea Billy shelves. Mine were the, basically the same thing, but they were just black. But I've been wanting the white ones for a while because I feel like they go better with all the furniture in my room because for the longest time my furniture has been so mix matched and like a bunch of different colors but now that I got rid of my bunk bed a couple what weeks no months ago no like about a year ago I would say when I moved back home from college after I graduated last year I pretty much just swapped out my old bed for this one I think has it really been a year oh my gosh that's crazy so what prompted this was my friend is moving into an apartment we were talking about Ikea and I go on Ikea to show her the Billy bookcases that everyone has because she has books and I was like the Billy ones are the best and then I look on the Ikea website and the Billy bookcases are like $20 off. I don't know if it's like a permanent price that they have, but I was like, I just got paid. This is my sign to finally get the white bookshelves. And then my dad said that I could give my old ones to my cousins. So I was like, this is literally the perfect time for me to get it. And it's right before grad school. I've been like saying that when I go to grad school, I want to make sure that my room is the way that I want it to be and like perfectly perfect or as perfect as I can make it because my program is hybrid so I'm going to be home most of the time and doing my work here so I want to make sure that my space is like nice because I'm just going to be here most of the time so I was like you know what if the bookcases are on sale I might as well just go for it so here we are. I have to build one more bookshelf. I have two here right now. I have to build one more bookshelf and then put it here. Also, my parents aren't home right now. My dad is gonna help me with like anchoring my bookshelves to the wall. But let me show you the state of my floor right now. Guys, it's so bad. These are just like Funko Pops and books and like stuff that was on top of my bookshelf. And then like there's my work bag and stuff. Those are books that I need to get rid of. There's a random flip flop there. Don't know what that's doing there. But um, this is the state of my floor right now. Everything is just so cluttered and overwhelming, which is okay because like these were on my shelves. It just, it's giving me a headache just looking at all of this. But this is what um, these shelves look like so far. I asked my dad to cut a little hole underneath my bookshelf because I have an outlet back there and I didn't want to waste it so I put that there and he cut a hole in it. really love how the shelves look here and then I was gonna put another one in this space. My room is an actual mess right now it's making me so anxious. Um okay I'm gonna build the last shelf. I'll come back to you later. You don't need to see me building. I will probably have the grossest expression on my face. Okay bye. So here are the finalized shelves. So I have a little more space because this shelf isn't a half shelf anymore. I'm just gonna put the books back and figure out how we're going to arrange this. I think I wanna keep it the way it was, but just switch it up slightly because I do have some more space. So I'm gonna add some things that weren't there before. But like, yeah, for example, the TVR cart is I think I might be dissolving it, but for the most part, everything's gonna stay the same. 
So it's a couple of weeks later, I finished with my shelves, and I'm finally going to give you a long-awaited bookshelf tour. I've been getting requests to film a bookshelf tour since the beginning of my booktube era on this channel, so like 2021, March. And now I'm finally proud of how my bookshelves look. I do have a couple of Christmassy things. I'm currently filming this on Christmas night. So I know it's not Christmas by the time I post this. I'm gonna try to have it up in a couple days or so. So hopefully it's still like okay to be posting with like the Christmas deck, whatever, who cares? I'm just gonna show you everything on here. So these are my shelves. On the top I have some storage stuff and then some of my Litfic books and my Coho books. And then I have some more storage stuff and then my Funkos. Guys, I don't have a proper tripod so this is so scary right now. Okay, I have everything organized by genre. There's more down there. I'll get to those shelves when we get to those shelves. This first shelf unit starts off with like mystery thriller and then it gets into, I don't have much sci-fi. I just have these and then the Red Rising series. So, I don't know. They fit here, so whatever. This whole shelf is fantasy, but the bottom unit, which I will show you later, is all my manga and graphic novels. As we move over to this side. I have another ring light here. This I actually use when I read here on this corner. Um, sometimes I bring my chair here and um, I need a lamp. So I use this small little ring light and it's really cool because it like clamps perfectly oh, on my bookshelves and it's a little ugly but it's functional. And this is basically just all romance. And then I have some like random stuff on the bottom like middle grade childhood books that I can't seem to part with. So those are those shelves. I also have these shelves up here on top of my bed. There isn't really much there, so I'll just go through those quickly at the end. I'm not gonna pull out every single individual book because that would be insane. My bow just fell out of my hair. All right, but we're not gonna do that today because who has the time? First off, I have a little toast on pal. I bought this a really long time ago before they became thing. So she goes there and I have a little gingerbread from the Target dollar section. Don't lie about my hair guys, I fell asleep with my hair in this thing. So don't laugh if it looks really bad from the back. First I have my Stephen King collection. I don't have much of his. I haven't even read those books but I got them because of Haley Pham and I'm really intent on reading Billy Summers this year. Then I have my Agatha Christie collection. This is my prized possession. I bought all of these special editions, these HarperCollins special editions, when I went to Shakespeare and Company in Paris. I've read a lot of these, but not all of them. I'm currently working my way through all of Poirot's books. Those are definitely on my TBR for 2024. And then I have my Louise Penny collection, and I haven't read a single smidget of them. I've only heard the most amazing things about her books. So I started collecting them every single time I go to like the thrift store or like the secondhand bookstore. And I haven't read a single one because I've just been so overwhelmed. I think you'll find that thing very common with all my books. On to the next shelf. I actually read a lot of these. Um, only one of this hardcover set area that I haven't read, actually two of them, are my two Lucy Foley books. The guest list in the Paris apartment. And I think I did get both of these secondhand as well. You will also find that theme very common with all my books. Um, I get a lot of them secondhand because books are expensive. My Riley Sager collection. I've read these two. I still have to read The House Across the Lake. She still has her Target sticker. I have nails on so I can't really take it off. I do have to read all of these. I've read most of these. The only ones I haven't read are part of my Frida McFadden collection. McFadden? McFadden. Oh my gosh. The Coworker, The Housemaid's Secret, and The Locked Door. Why is The Housemaid's Secret? What? Hey. Okay. 
Moving on to the next shelf, I have the Truly Devious series for the first three books. I'm considering donating these or selling them. I'm listening to the audiobook of this right now and it's kind of boring. Then I have Jennifer Lynn Barnes' other series, which honestly should be over here with these. I'm gonna leave it as it is because I don't want to have to worry about that. I'm so sorry if the angle changed and my camera died. So we're on the floor now. Now we're starting to get into the fantasy books. I already talked a little bit about my sci-fi ones up there so we're just gonna skip those because I also just moved my camera and I don't want to move it back. We have all my Cassandra Clare books and then here I have my young adult dystopian section which actually, these are also sci-fi. I have more sci-fi books than I thought. I'll just leave them here for now. These are probably gonna move. I have my Mara Diet Trilogy, Lunar Chronicles, Uglies. These are my favorite. This is the Scythe Trilogy and then the Gleanings novellas by Neil Shusterman. I haven't read Gleanings yet, but I adored the original trilogy. These books had me thinking for the longest time. I still think about these books to this day. I do want to do a reread of these. Such an underrated series. I know it does have some popularity on the internet and stuff, but I feel like it should be really out there. Like really, really, really out there. These are so, so good. I have some other books by Neil Schusterman, Roxy, which I have never read and don't plan on reading. I just wanted to have it for my collection because I'm a hoarder. And then Dry. I did read this one. This is my set of the Hunger Games trilogy. I bought these when I was in London a really long time ago. I think in 2015, I want to say. And aren't these just the coolest editions of the Hunger Games? I love the spines and on the back. And I have the classic Divergent series with this sticker that's not a sticker. It pisses me off. Then I have the first three books in the selection series and I have not read these yet but the rest of the books on here I pretty much have read except these two and then these three. This actually isn't a bad shelf. Then down here we have my Harry Potter and Percy Jackson series. Oh my gosh she is so dusty but yeah basically this is my middle grade fantasy shelf. These are the books that really got me into reading when I was in fifth grade and really just catapulted my love for reading. I did like to read before but not as much as I do now until I read these books. I got the first two for my birthday when I was like in third grade and I didn't read them till I was in fourth or fifth grade. Um, they were the only books on my bookshelves and I was like okay I'll give them a go. I'm so upset that they discontinued these covers because they are so much nicer than the ones they have now. I have the Heroes of Olympus series, my Harry Potter collection, and then I have a copy of the Ship of Theseus. I don't know why it's here. It's just my bookshelves are all over the place. While we're here, I'm just gonna scooch to the side and we're just gonna start from the bottom of this one. First off, I have a little wallflower here that I put on this little extension cord because I do have two outlets in the back of this bookshelf that I didn't want to go to waste, so I plugged in an extension cord and I drilled a hole at the bottom of this bookshelf. That way the wire can feed through and my, I don't wanna say her name. She's gonna freak out. She can live here peacefully. The bottom here, I have my manga shelf. I really, really, really enjoy the Spy Family series. If you haven't read it yet or if you haven't read manga yet, to be honest, it's an amazing first manga to start out with. And I have some more mangas, blah, blah, blah. The Amulet series that I read in middle school, I really love this one. And then I have my Lore Olympus books. I love those so, so, so much. I still have to read the most recent one, but yeah, I adore them. Please, if you read them, check trigger warnings before you do. Then I have some more young adult fantasy. I have the Ruby Red trilogy. These are so pretty. I literally bought them when I was in middle school. I have not yet read them. Guys, it's been years. Then I have Powerless. I'm currently reading this one. I'm reading the paperback version. I have like this much left in it and I just haven't bit the bullet and finished it. Cruel Prince Trilogy, Curse of Dark and Lonely, um, The Kiss of Deception and All of These, Dance of These, Shatter Me. This I haven't read yet. 
this one I just finished and I liked it. So I did just buy the other two books, but they're on my TBR cart right now. So here I have the Bridge Kingdom series, my Lee Bardugo and Stephanie Garber collection. I've read all of these except for Crooked Kingdom. Guys, I read Six of Crows two, three years ago. I can't get back into it. Six of Crows, I, in my opinion, I thought it was boring. And everyone loves it, but I thought it was boring. Is it me? Am I the problem? Hold on, my voice is like killing me. I need to get, drink some water. This video is gonna be a pain to edit, I already know. I have two copies of this whole thing. I don't know why. I think I got these both at used bookstores and they have like the sprayed edges. Then I have the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy, all the Barnes and Noble editions because they're the Superior Editions. Then I have Throne of the Fallen, the signed edition from Black Friday at Barnes & Noble. Divine Rivals, and then I have my Chloe Gong collection. Then I have my Brandon Sanderson collection, which is extensive, considering the fact I've only read three of them. Um, but I have the Mistborn series. Okay, the reason why I got the UK editions of his books. Number one, they're just prettier. I'm sorry, they're just so much prettier. And number two, the Stormlight Archive, can we appreciate how they cut them into two parts so you don't have to be looking around this big old book? Because this is just like the size of it, it's perfect. And they're not like Bible pages, they're like legit pages. So instead of carrying around this big old book, I'm carrying half the size. And then in my head, when I finish half the book, I finish a whole book, if that makes sense. So that's why I decided to opt for the UK editions. I want to reread the Mistborn series. It was so good. One of my favorite trilogies I've ever read. I haven't read these ones yet. I've only read like the first original three. So good. Then I have my Victoria Schwab collection with my little penguino. I've only read Addie LaRue. Still haven't read this series yet. I hate the new covers though. They're so ugly, like these are beautiful. Look at that artwork. Why did they ruin it? And then I have Song of Achilles, which I didn't like, so I hide him. I have my little strawberry here. And then I might do a TBR jar. I got this for Christmas. So is it a sign? Maybe. I have the Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I literally got it because it was $3. Also, I know a lot of people really love that book. I have The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Ellington. This was like $5 at the used bookstore and I heard it was really good. The Will of the Many. I saw this at Barnes & Noble and I saw good reviews when I looked it up on Goodreads. Started reading the first couple pages, was intrigued, got to page nine <laughs> in the bookstore. And then my book talk friends started saying that they liked it and like fantasy book talk loves this book so i bought it before it was popular but still haven't read it yet the red rising series haven't read the season i don't know what the series is called haven't read it haven't read this <laughs> haven't read these either i literally have not read any of these no i read one okay i read the atlas six if you can even count me reading it because I DNF'd it. I know Yellowface is not fantasy. I don't know about Babel. I wanted it to go with the rest of Rebecca F. Kwong's books, so. And then we start getting into more of my romantic books. I have Anastasia by Sophie Lark, the Zodiac Academy series. I'm up to book four. I still have to read five through eight, and then The Awakening is told by the boys. And then this novella, which has a very funny name. I also still have to get the newest novella, 8.5, and then nine comes out really soon. I'm really excited for that. Even though I still have to read these ones. But I love Zodiac Academy, guys. It's my guilty pleasure series. I love it so much. But if you ask me what it's about, don't ask me. Please don't let me be the one to answer that question for you. This series, I don't even know what it's called. Daughter of No World series trilogy. I don't know. And then the Serpent in the Wings of Night duology by Carissa Broadbent. Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. And I have several additions i do have and there's a girl here haven't read iron flame yet i got a little bored i'm on page 47 let's move on to my last standing shelf i honestly don't have a specific way of organizing my romance section actually let's do this okay that makes me feel a little bit better so i have emily henry here and then down here i don't really like her books that much i don't hate them but i don't love them then we have christina lauren i also not the biggest fan. And some other random romances. Then I have my Tessa Bailey collection. I love these two so much. 
Um, and then I have these. I haven't read them. I haven't read any of these. Read this one. This one is on my immediate TBR. I need to read this. Absolutely no. These are like my summer romances that I won't be getting to in the near future because it's the middle of winter. My Anna Huang collection. And I have the Spanish Love Deception that I did not like. I do not to. And the reason why it's still on my shelf is because I highlighted in the first 10 pages and then immediately regretted it. And then I have the Eden series. I only have the first two. I haven't read them yet. And these are my Rebecca Yaros like romance books. I haven't read those yet either. <laughs> this is getting to be really sad, guys. My L. Kennedy collection. Now onto this shelf. I think these are mostly indie books. I have the two of us, Darling Venom, a bunch of other ones. Um, these ones I'm really excited for. Safety Measures and Indigo Eyes. I've been following the author on Instagram and she's been posting scenes and stuff. I honestly need to just read this. It's so short. I'm taking it on my shelf so that I actually read it. And then I have my Lauren Asher collection. I haven't read these yet. I tried reading this one. I DNF'd it. I'm gonna get back to it. I just wasn't feeling the grumpy sunshine in that moment. I have the Dreamland Billionaire series, which I love. Love Free Design, which I've heard so many things about. And then I have, I forgot what the series is called, but Flawless, Heartless, Powerless, Reckless, and Hopeless by Elsie Silver. Then I have my Candy Steiner books, and then this random Melanie Harlow book. My Dark Romeo. I, going to be honest, I bought this because of the cover. Like, look at it. It's gorgeous. Haunting Adeline. I forgot to mention that this is my dark romance corner. I don't have much. I used to have Emily McIntyre's books, but I didn't hold them because they weren't my favorite. I have Sophie Lark's books. I really need to get to these. And the covers are so, so pretty. And then I have Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. Someone convinced me to either keep this or return it because I am kind of scared. Dark romance is crazy, guys. Then let's come back down. Let's move this. I have my Jessa Hastings books. I hated this. I explained in my Instagram stories on my bookstagram if you want to check out why. The Paper Princess by Erin Watt. And then it goes into all my young adult books. Some highlights. 12th Boys of Level 4. I think these were signed actually. And then I have the UK editions of The Summer I Turned Pretty. These are old as well. Got these in 2015. And they're signed. I got them signed at a young adult book festival. These are just some books from my favorite Asian young adult author. I haven't read this one yet though, but she's Asian, so I can put it here too. This one, so fire. If you haven't read this yet, try trigger warnings, but this book was so good. And then down here we have a plethora of young adult books that were once very, very popular in like 2012. Morgan Matson, Jennifer Niven, Rainbow Rowell, Nicola Yu. This book, The Sun is Also Star was my favorite book for a very long time in high school. Um, a bunch of John Green. I have a bunch of his UK editions. I have never even read Looking for Alaska. Tell me why I bought a 10th anniversary edition. I heard it's not that good anyway. Paper Downs, I love this edition. Guys, tell me why books in the UK are so much cheaper than books in the United States. It's ridiculous. And then my favorite Stephanie Perkins books. I used to read Anne and the French Kiss once a year in like the winter time. It's my guilty pleasure book. I have a paperback edition of it and I can't find it anywhere. I used to read that version and I annotated it and everything and I cannot find it anywhere. I'm so upset. And then down here I have some books that I have like two editions of. I have the Filipino edition of the Anna and the French Kiss companion series, I guess. I saw these in a bookstore in the Philippines. They were literally $4 a piece. So I thought it was really cool. I have the movie covers for To All the Boys I've Loved Before. I have books from when I was little, the Ramona books. This was my favorite book when I was in like third grade. Sweet Treats and Secret Crushes. I just like to keep some of my old books on here as well. My high school musical books from when I was little. And then I have two random classics here. This book I also really liked when I was little. It freaked me out. It's called Scat. And I have my one non-fiction book here. Get Out of Your Head. So far, it's really, really good. But if you're Christian, I highly recommend this book. The summary of it is that Jesus is the answer to everything which we love. And I barely have any memory on my camera left, so let's just quickly show you guys what's up here. So this is like my historical fiction, non-fiction, lit fiction, 
section. Taylor Jenkins read is my highlight there. I still have to read Carrie Soto is back. That's my only book by her that I own that I haven't read yet. I've read mostly all of these. And then I have all my Colleen Hoover books here. I've read all of them. Some are better than others. My favorite is Verity. That's all I'm gonna say about her. I feel like mentioning her is just gonna cause controversy, so I'm just not going to. And then lastly, we have this section. It has grown since you've last seen it, but basically these are most of like my favorites. We have, um, they're kind of hiding, the Windy City series, Carly Fortune, Hannah Grace, Chloe Walsh, Lucy Score, Ali Hazelwood, Say You Swear by Megan Brandy. If you haven't read that yet, you need to. Um, and then the Addicted Calloway series. I haven't read most of those yet. I've only read the first two, but they're there because they're pretty. Then we have my Sarah J. Mass collection. But yeah, that's basically my book shelf tour. My voice is going away again. So I think I need to shut up before I lose it again. Oh, really quick. Here's my TBR cart. I only am using this first shelf. The other shelves are for more stuffed toys. This is like my immediate TBR and then plus indigo eyes. But honestly, I could probably finish this tomorrow. So I might just do that because I'm very behind on my reading goal. But yeah, those are my bookshelves. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video is so chaotic, but thank you for watching anyway. I love y'all. I'll see you guys in my next video. I'm probably going to be a little less consistent in posting next year because of grad school. I hope you understand. Um, I'll definitely be a lot more active on my Instagram, on my bookstagram. It's um, at Emily's Reading Nook. So if you want to keep up with my reading journey next year, um, hopefully I'm reading at all because of grad school. Um, just follow me on there. Yeah, no promises about booktube next year just because of grad school, which is really sad. It breaks my heart because I do love booktube, but a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love y'all. Happy 2024. Love you. Bye.